Next up, we have snares. And again, snares being a main element, I'm layering them just like I do with the kicks. And in hip hop music, also I find, you know, the, the snares are, obviously we're looking to have nice heavy percussion, but I'm also finding that I use a combination between claps and snares. And the claps, I'm doing something uh, here where I pan them left and right. So you'll see I have a main snare element. And then I have a left clap and a right clap. And these are actually programmed in a way that they're staggered, which makes the clap sound bigger and fatter. So if we look in our MIDI pattern here again, I'm doing this with MIDI notes. So you can see here, here's my main snare and it's hitting exactly on the two. But then you see my right clap and my left clap. And they're actually offset so that they're happening uh, just slightly behind and then they're not playing at the same time. So it gives this kind of humanized sound to it. It's like when you hear a crowd of people clapping and they don't all clap at the same time. They clap at slightly different but very close times. This is the same type of effect to that and you hear this in a lot of hip-hop music. Finally, playing in time with the snares, I actually have a finger snap. And the finger snap has a bit of reverb on it. So let's take a look at the right hand clap. Again, I'm using the sampler in Ableton because I'm using that same chain selector trick. And really all that I have applied to it is an EQ. I'm rolling out a lot of the low end from about 600 hertz down because I really just want the high end of the sample to come through. The main punch is coming from my main snare and I'm boosting the high end a little bit. Now if we go over to our main snare, you can see here, again, I'm EQing it. I put EQs on every single sample. Again, rolling out the low end. And in this case, this is a, our heavy main snare, so I'm not rolling out much in the low end. I'm just rolling out from about 60 hertz down. And then I have a nice big boost at about 220 hertz. And I find in that frequency range is uh, where the snare has a lot of power. And so I'm boosting that to get the snare sounding pretty chubby. Then we go over to our right clap. And I just want you guys to notice here that within a drum rack, we have mixer settings. So we can see we have volume, we have pans, and um, I'm panning the claps to the left and right. The main snare is dead center and it's boosted a bit. So it's definitely the main element. So our left clap now, which sounds like this, again, is running in a sampler and it's using a very similar EQ curve to the other one where we're rolling out quite a bit of the low end and we're boosting the high end a little bit. Now, because our snares all together here are a drum rack, I can process them all using the same effects chain afterwards. So I now have a camel fat and an isotope ozone plugin that are running on all my snares. Camel fat is being used purely for its distortion models. Everything else is turned off and in here you can see I'm using the exciter which will boost and add some buzz to the high end. I'm using quite a bit of tube compression or sorry tube distortion and I'm using a little bit of bit crushing. And then another thing I really like about this effect is it's got a mix control down here which allows me to mix the wet and the dry signal together. And in this case I'm definitely letting some of the clean signal come through but I'm mixing in the effects so um, I'm controlling the wet dry signal. Finally we have ozone on here and ozone is again using the paragraphic equalizer to roll out the low end and the loudness maximizer. Now you guys might be asking well why are you rolling out the low end when you've already rolled out the low end here and this is just a kind of a precaution because each EQ has a curve on it and just because you're rolling out low end doesn't mean it gets it all. It decreases the volume of whatever's there but it doesn't just eliminate it it basically will decrease it based on the EQ curve. Now the reason why I do this here is because it's just prior to a limiter and what a limiter is doing is it's going to effectively push up the volume level of everything and just shear off the waveform. So I really want to make sure that I've gotten all the low end out of my samples before they go into the limiter. So you know is it absolutely necessary? I don't really know but it has an EQ built into it and I like to always err on the side of caution so I get the cleanest sounding percussion possible. So then we're using the limiter. And again, I really like this fast and loud setting from Ozone. And we have the threshold down and you'll see we're getting some gain reduction.
perfect. And again, I'm looking for only a few decibels of gain reduction. I'm not looking for a huge amount of limiting happening here because typically when a track is exported, it's going to be limited again in the mastering phase. So I just want a bit of limiting happening here. I'm going to fatten up my snares. Okay. Now let's move into some of the other elements. So the next element I have is called a, I just call it a tap. And it's basically what I would call an effect. You know, it's not necessarily a hi-hat or a kick or a snare, which are some of the main percussion elements. It's a little extra. And I put it in there as an accent on a couple of the notes. So again, I'm boosting some high end, rolling out the low end. And in my MIDI pattern, you can see where it is here. We have the taps right here. So it's just adding in a bit of intrigue and excitement in the percussion that otherwise wouldn't be there if it was just a straight beat. All right, now we've got my high end. And in this case, I'm not using hi-hats for the most part in this track. I'm actually using a combination of a shaker and a tambourine. So again, this is a drum rack within a drum rack because I want these guys to be processed together. And I have a shaker sample and a tambourine sample. And these ones again are panned left and right they're playing at the same time, but just to widen out the stereo spectrum a little bit. Each one has an EQ on it, which is rolling out all the low end. And then you can see on these guys as well, we have a Sugar Bites Wow filter here. And what the Wow filter is doing is it's actually adding some resonance. So I actually have it on a low pass 24 setting. I'm driving it up a little bit, so this is a type of distortion which adds some nice high-end buzz to it. I have the cutoff all the way up, so really I'm not actually using it as a filter, because normally a low-pass filter would be down here and it would be cutting out some of the high frequencies. In this case, I have it all the way up, and I'm using its resonance because I find it gives a nice sparkle to the top end of the mix with this resonance curve that I can't get when I'm using an EQ. So I just like the sound of it, and uh, it's a bit of an unconventional use of the filter, but that's how I'm doing it. Okay, and just to uh, just to preview on their own what the shakers and tambourine sounds like, they don't come into the track until here. Actually right here. <laughs> 